I'm like, what if I named the rooster Mike? <laughs> He's always pretty much right here with me. Pishka, stop. Thank you. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. So it's been a couple weeks since I've actually vlogged, but over the course of the last couple weeks, we've actually been doing some summer prep around the farm, which is going to be in today's video. Because if you're new here, I live in Florida and during the summer, we basically stop all outside work because of how hot it is for one, which I can do with the heat, but mostly because of how much rain we get. So I like to say that our summer is like up north's winter when there's so much snow and then they can't do anything outside anymore. That's kind of what our summer is like because we flood really bad from the rain and I don't like to use any of the heavy equipment on the pastures or anything like that. And we also try to do things to prep for the summer floods and rain. So that's what we've been doing over the course of the last couple of weeks. Plus, since I haven't vlogged in a little bit, I'm gonna do a little update on the animals as we go along, but mostly it's gonna be like a farm vlog, but with some summer prep that we've been doing over the course of the last couple of weeks. So without further ado, we should just go ahead and get right into it. Please come say hello to the vlog. Mishka. Mishka said bye as soon as he said hello. Like I said, doing a little um, update on all the animals since it's been a little bit since I've talked to the horses with you guys, but I'm out here in the pasture right now. We have Blaze. Come here, buddy. He does not like lately to be messed around with in the pasture. He's so used to not being ridden much, so now he's like, don't come near me because he thinks that's what we're gonna do. But we're not. Hi, Cash. They're all very busy. <laughs> They're all very busy grazing. They're like, I don't want to deal with you today. You don't want to deal with me today? They are up for my antics today. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm hanging all over them. Those two horses want nothing to do with me. So there's that. And then of course, Louis, he doesn't really want much to do with me either. But there's Louis making his appearance. That's about as good as we're going to get from him today. All right, guys, anyways, moving on to the actual work. So one of our first projects actually consists of cleaning up the back of the barn. The back of the barn has been a catch all for a long time now. So Mike's been unchaining the skid steer and getting it off the trailer so that he can take it back there and start the cleanup process. Thankfully, we do have this machine, so it makes a lot of the harder work a lot easier. Going into the barn now that I've been ignored by the two horses outside. Maybe these two won't ignore me. No, they won't. Hi, Bubby. Hi, buddy. So Trigger in June, still inside during the day for the summer. Trigger's eye issues are already starting to happen. You guys literally always ask me about this, why Trigger in June stay in the barn during the day. And here's a prime example, because he has really bad allergies. So, so this actually started during the summer one year where he would get really bad allergies and the vet would put him on a medicine called Dex, so the Dex would make him stop sweating. So then it was not really a good thing for a horse that lives in Florida to not sweat. It's not really good for a horse to not sweat in general. So he is now stalled during the day, out at night, and it helps a lot more than if he's out during the day for some reason, I don't know why, but it just does. But plus, he's also a lot prettier when he's stalled during the day. He gets a really dark coat, which I think is absolutely beautiful on him. If we keep him outside for a bit during the day, like a couple weeks, he definitely will get sun bleached, but he's just really pretty when he is inside his stall. Plus he loves the fans blasting on him all day long. So I don't think he minds being stalled during the day. Now with Junie, Trigger needs a partner to hang out with and, you know, not be alone at night. So that's where we have June in the mix of here because June and Cash don't necessarily get along. You have so many flies on you, my goodness. But we figured it was perfect because she gets along really well with Trigger, so she could just hang out with Trigger. And since Cash is on an opposite schedule, that's why they are together. Little update on her eye because it's been so long since we've done an eye update for her. Let me see it. So this is the scar and that's pretty much how it's gonna look probably forever, maybe years and years, it will go down and get smaller, but she's not blinded or anything, but that's just how it's recovered ever since she had the stromal abscess in her eye. We have not talked about it in so long, but it is completely healed. That's just unfortunately the scar, which makes me so sad. And Miss Dinky, hi Dinks. Hi Dinky. Hi Dinky, she's actually in our stall right now because she has switched to the schedule with Trigger and June, kind of by accident. Some days she doesn't want to come in for some reason from the pasture when we go to switch around the horses, so she'll just stay out at night with 
June and Trigger, and then she kind of follows their schedule for a bit, but then in like two days, she'll go back on the other schedule with the other three horses. So she kind of just switches around who she hangs out with, but definitely summer because her summer store has already started. It's scabbed up. We've been trying to get ahead of it, but if you have been a loyal subscriber since we have had Dinky, you'll know that every single year around this exact time, this happens to Dinky and it takes us pretty much all summer to fight it. And then during the winter, she is perfectly fine once again, but we always are trying to get it healed up all throughout the summer. So she's been wearing fly masks and we've just been putting a lot of like wound stuff on it so it will scab. So it doesn't have that like big like scar tissue just yet, but it is kind of starting to get a little bit puffy, but it's not raw, which is good at least, but we've been trying to doctor it as much as we can. And hopefully it won't be as bad this year. I feel like this is deja vu because every year I say the same thing about this donkey around the same time of year, talking about the same exact thing. Oh my gosh, the curse of the summer sore. So this back area has gotten pretty neglected over the past year of just having it like this. It's overgrown. There used to be stone back here and such, but now it's just pretty overgrown. And we haven't really used our spreaders because they haven't worked so there's just a lot of stuff that's been back here it's been like a catch-all and it's time to clean it up a bit before the summer gets here so over here this used to be where all the pavers were and i would like to be able to see them again all of these muck buckets that we can't use anymore that spreader that we really need to get back up and working um a hay slow feeder back there gates and just fencing supplies and then the old broken like duck chicken coop and then this old spreader so there's just a lot of things that need to get out of here first we need to clean it up and then we need to um, organize it a bit better so Mike's gonna bring the skid steer back here and the first thing he's gonna do is use the forks and get everything out of here like the big stuff and he is just going to put it in the back pasture since right now the horses are up in the front pasture another thing that you guys always ask about like when we're working on the farm now that I have a baby you guys always ask like, where's the baby and the funny thing about it is he's always pretty much right here with me um attached to the front of me in a carrier and he loves going around the farm loves the animals and he absolutely loves being outside so it makes it really easy for him to hang out with us all while i'm filming it's just different angles though because as you guys know i'm not really showing my baby on the internet so this is as good as it's getting but i love 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 being able to bring him all around the farm with us and do everything that we've been doing pretty much before we just have to take breaks more so often, which I think I needed because before we used to work ourselves to the bone. At the end of the day, we were so, so, so exhausted. So it does get us inside more a little bit through our process of working outside, but it's been so much fun just having him tag along, especially now that he's getting bigger and he's actually almost six months already, you guys. I cannot believe how fast time is flying. So that answers that because I know I see you guys always asking me where the baby is whenever we are filming, but he's with me all the time or with Mike doing the same thing. <laughs> It's already looking so much better back here with just a good amount of the stuff removed. He just pulled out the chicken coop. The chicken coop is going to the fire pit. You've been well used, my friend. During the hurricane, it kind of ruined that little coop. But even with just what has gone already, it's looking so much better back here. He had a little spill with our paper pile that we're gonna have to clean up so that's no fun but for the rest of it it's looking really good you remove the mats all the muck carts the manure spreaders the hay slow feeder all the fencing supplies and such so just for removing stuff it's looking really good so since this pallet of bricks fell it's either we get another pallet and we put the bricks on top of it but we were just talking about laying them right here. So Mike is on his way to go get the bucket so he can drag this area back and then we can put the pavers here rather than just restacking them. Just trying to save on work here. So it's actually been about two weeks since we did the first clearing in here with the skid steer like you guys saw. And already it's growing back so much, but obviously it's much better than what it was. We're just gonna keep needing to do this all summer so far, I guess, because I just don't know exactly what I want to do back here. If you guys have any recommendations of what I should do, we've stored a lot of things back here and then I don't really like how it gets, but we do need places to store things. But there's so much growth that happens in here. Like even this paver pad, like some people pay big bucks for this when you have grass between your pavers. 
but that's not the look I'm going for. So I don't know if I should just rip it up. I was gonna put down the rubber mats even, but I don't know, I cannot decide. I don't even really use it as a wash rack right now. I pretty much use the one up front. But anyways, we did have some extra pavers, so we lined them up here at the edge of the barn, which I actually like this because during summer, it gets really mucky right here because we have a lot of hay. When I sweep the barn out, it ends up right here and hay and water gets to be like a sludgy mess. So this I'm really excited about to see how it does this summer because it's gonna be not like muddy here. So I'm excited about that. Every summer we're always making new decisions, deciding what's gonna be better for the farm and the setup. So this has been my big decision for the summer. It's adding this little paver extended area of the alleyway of the barn, but it does look so much better out there. Hi, Oreo. Hi, baby. Hi. Now that the back of the barn's done, it's time to go over into this goat pasture because we have some things to work on over here with our new and improved chicken coop and the run. All right, we're coming through. Back up, Minnie. Back up, guys. So if you haven't seen my chicken run video, make sure you go watch it. But this is our chicken run that we recently had built. But we had put some dirt over here, but not a lot. And we've had some rain, so it's kind of packed down. Now there's even grass growing above it. But when we built this, we did a lot of the hardware cloth to extend down past our wood. So when I get a little closer here, as you can see, it's down past the wood right here. And the goal always was to put dirt to go above it, even above like this two by six right here. So we finally got some dirt. But the goats have been having fun playing it. So Mike's just gonna take the skids here and he's gonna spread it all around. So then technically we will have hardware cloth that's dug into the ground. The dirt work is coming along really well and it looks so good. I'm so happy and excited that we did this because during the summer, it's like a sloppy mess over here because it floods really bad because this area right here is a little bit lower. As you can see, like the trees are higher than the pasture. So it always holds water right here. And for the past four summers that we've lived here, every time we go to feed the chickens or give them water during the summer, we're literally like up to our ankles in water. So it's really nice that we have this fresh dirt here, which we'll have some time to solidify more before the rain comes but it looks so good this looks reminds me of like chocolate ice cream oh my gosh that's the flavor i want <laughs> chocolate ice cream but as you can see now it goes up to the two by six over a bit even so this is so exciting we've been saying that we were going to do this for what like it's we've been here for four summers now yeah. like we've been saying we were going to do this like every year that we needed dirt over in this area but it never became a priority because it was like whatever we'll just you know yeah, next year. Oh, next summer, it's raining. We'll just be up to our ankles in water, but not this year, folks. Dry path. Now I need like some, I don't know, what do you think? Like a pathway or something to get from here to over there. That would be nice and fun. This looks like the perfect grounds for my garden, don't you think? What do you think? Yeah. For a garden. I don't know, guys. I still want a garden so bad. Am I going to talk about it? way too often to not have a garden yet but i just don't know what to do or where to put it or where to even begin it feels like such a hard thing and it gets so complicated because i'm always like so so like i'm scarred to take away any pasture like grass from our animals but i'm like i just want to make more food like what vegetables and fruits and herbs and things like that but i can't do that unless i have a garden but i can't have a garden unless i take away some pasture so i'm like Ugh, i'm stuck between a rock and a hard place here and i'm like where do i put the garden without taking up too much pasture which pasture do i do it in it's so it's not it shouldn't even be this complicated but it is because i like i said i'm scarred for some reason and i have this like pasture fear that i cannot take away any grass even if it's a little bit of grass from my animals because it just like means so much to me. I don't know why. Mike will tell you literally like I'm obsessed with the grass. Yeah, she'll go crazy if I like make a tire mark in the grass. 
It's just like a yard. weird thing. I know. I don't know why. Like I'm obsessed with it. When you have horses, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Let me know in the comments if you have horses or like any pasture animals that eat grass. If you have like an irrational fear of grass like going away. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I have this grass thing, but I swear I'm like, I cannot be the only one that doesn't want to take away or ruin any grass. Like when I have, and I have a lot of horses and I actually have a lot of animals that eat grass. So I'm like, this is their vital food source. Why would I want to get rid of it? That's like throwing everything out of my fridge and saying, okay, whatever. Like, I don't know. It's so weird. It's so weird. But anyways, this is our new dirt pad that we have over here. It's basically like a goat dance floor because they're hanging out all over it. <laughs> like we just gave them something cool, which is, you know, again, this is my thing. Look at the no grass. When we first were talking about this, Mike was like, I promise the grass will grow through it. I'm like, how can it grow through it? It's so thick, I don't know. But anyways, they'll, they'll be fine. Look at that. Goat little hoof marks all over this freshly, there we go. There's some more. Look at these legs, it's fresh dirt. Anyways, now that this is done, summer prep is going well. It's time to give these chickens some water because they are due for water. I will also say that having a run in here with these goats was not our best idea. They absolutely <laughs> like love wanting to go in this chicken coop. It is unreal. Hey, girly. Oh, you think the garden over here so that they can yeah, eat my garden too? Out. Oh, to fence it? Yeah, that's actually not a bad thought. I'll fence them out of the garden. Hi, guys. Someone's picnic is empty. Guys, I still need names. I was reading a ton of your guys' comments from when I introduced you to my flock, and I still haven't solidified anything. At least I need to like name my rooster. I feel like that could be an easy one. I just name him like Jim. I should name him Mike. <laughs> Mike, what if I named the rooster Mike? <laughs> Like, it would just be so funny, just like, because Mike, I'm gonna call the rooster Mike. He like sits up here, and I think I've told you guys this already. Every morning he jumps up on this like tree stump and he crows so loud. It's like his thing. He's gotta be the emperor. The girls are all below him. It's the craziest thing. I see him from my window every single morning doing that. Hey, girly. Hi, girls. What's going on? I feel like our name should just be Wig. Wig. All right, bye girls. We're gonna get you some water. It always gets so dirty in there. So if you have chicken, give your friend a reminder. Clean the base of your chicken water. It's always good to do this every now and again. Okay, admittedly, I haven't collected eggs in a couple days, okay? I said I was being good. Here I am now collecting eggs, but no, these did not all hatch in one day. If I was to tell you that they did, I'd be lying. I don't want to lie to you guys. But here I am, I'm collecting eggs, I'm being accountable. But I will say, none of these are brown or anything, and there's four brown eggs, and I only have one bird that lays brown eggs, so that means that I haven't collected in four days. So that's actually really not bad at all, and I have no pretty hens, so all these eggs are still good. Let's count how many eggs we have. So this is our haul for today. I always like showing this because this is a little bantam egg. And then this is actually like a little bit of an oversized chicken egg. Here, let's complete the collection. That little green one. Grab that green one, would you? So we have the three sizes. Bantam, normal, and then oversized. But since I've let these sit in there for a couple days, I want to reward the pigs anyway. So we're going to go give the pigs a little egg breakfast. Well, it's dinner, so egg dinner. It's breakfast for dinner. Yum, one egg for you. It's a good source of calcium. Chippy! Give me an egg. Dewey! Yeah. Dewey! Here, Chip. Oh no, it cracked. We're giving away eggs. Oh, Mr. Pig, is there an egg right over there? I think this is a double yolk. Really? It's, it's so messy. heavy. Let's see. It's very heavy. 
Will it be in double? I'm gonna try to crack Joker? it. Oh, crack it here and I can double to them. Yep, that's perfect. No, just one. Just it's a huge one egg. Yolk for them. Silly! Just in time. Oh, breezy. <laughs> I don't think they're getting it. Drink it. There we go. Oh, the yolk's still in there. Oh, someone wants an egg. Can I have an egg? He's like, I want an egg. Oh, yeah, he loves it. He loves it. Look at that. Same thing you think you're saying, there you go, boy. Oh, there's everyone rubbing their yolks today. You gotta just one bite of them. I know. But at least they're drinking them. Look at his whole ears outside. Oh my gosh, someone's yolk yeah. up. Oh, Stewie's getting mad at you. The last of the crew to update you guys all on. They're all playing. Hammer dog. It wouldn't be an update video if I didn't show the dogs. They're all so crazy right now. Daisy! Scotty! Lex! Oh, and last but not least, Penelope! You are so dirty. Penelope has decided that this part of the backyard is her mud pit. So now she's a dirty pig. Penelope. All right, you guys, so that is it for today's summer prep update on my animals vlog. We got a couple big projects done that we really needed to get done, so I'm very excited. Every year we do a couple new things to get prepared for the summer, so then the next year we don't have to do that step anymore, but then we come up with another step that we have to do. So this year I'm feeling like the most prepared because last year we did a ton because we kind of knew that we weren't gonna be super involved this year since we were gonna have a baby this year so when I was pregnant last year we, we really did a good job on getting the farm pretty much prepped for summer but there is a couple other things that I want to do. I want to get the barn completely pressure washed professionally or I will just do it myself but that does require us to like get a babysitter and all that so we'll see how that goes. Alright you guys well if you liked today's video make sure you go and give this video a big thumbs up if you guys are excited to see other videos like the barn getting completely pressure washed. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel down below make sure you turn those post notifications so you don't miss any videos like this you guys. Alright well we love you and we'll see you in the next one.